What's up, folks? Steve Harris, the Low Class Media. We are out here at Ott Ranch. It's wet. It's going to be wild. I'm scared. <laughs> Welcome to episode two, folks. This is supposed to be episode three, but due to some issues between the last race and this race with weather and had some filming issues, I wasn't able to film some of the stuff I did during practice after the last race. So again, this is episode two of a series I'm putting together over the 2024 season to just kind of work on some things to get better with my racing and my riding. Speaking of improving, Kyle and Chris actually have another bet that they want to make with me uh, and potentially another challenge that they're going to put me through. So we need to make sure we check in with them here in a little bit. But to bring y'all up to speed, if you weren't able to watch my last race video, the last race was at Gertz where I placed 19th out of 30 riders, which is terrible. And considering I made a $100 bet with both Chris and Kyle at the last race that I would come in seventh place or better. Well, I'm a bit more poor today as well. But along with the bet, they challenged me to go out after that last race and work on hopping logs, right? And I, I expect that that training that I've done between this last race and this one will be critical because usually at Odd Ranch, they have a pretty decent sized, you know, hard, easy split that can actually save you a lot of time, but it usually incorporates some sort of enduro obstacle. Last year, it was concrete culverts. This year, it'll probably be a log, so we'll have to go out and see. But let's jump out here and practice and check out the course, and then let's see what this obstacle looks like, and I'll show you the system that I've come up with for dealing with it during the race. This is gonna be pretty gnarly, folks. Drop it. Before we go to the logs, we need to thank one of our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, check out Hyperic Photography. If you raced this past weekend, it's likely that Justin from Hyperic Photography snapped a few photos of you. In fact, he snapped this one, this one, and this one of me, and they all look great. So if you haven't done so already, go to the website hypericphotography.com, fill out a photo request form, and get yourself some photos from your race this past weekend. Back to the logs. All right, folks, here are the logs. You gotta see uh, what it looks like here. Looks like they're not exactly straightforward. All right, so here we are at the log crossing. Got a little method for figuring these logs out. Number one, you really want to make sure that if you jump the log, it's actually going to save you time because at the end of the day, if it's only going to save you a few seconds, if you crash and you got to pick up the bike, at the end of the day, it just doesn't, it doesn't really help you. Here today, there's actually a really big amount of time it's safe. If you hit the log successfully today, you can really cut off a lot of time and maybe, maybe pick some, pick some time back up on your competitors. Number two, what I was thinking about when I was practicing is like, I really just gotta assess the situation and kind of figure out which part of the log I wanna go over because they're not obviously uniform. And so some parts are, are easier to hit than, than other parts of the log. And then number three, you really gotta think about, okay, are these logs gonna look the same when I get there, right? Are they gonna be real dug out on the approach? Are they gonna move? 
you know, maybe they're going to get worn down. And so you look at something in practice and you're like, I can't hit that. But by the time you come around in the race, it's super worn down and it's like way easier to hit. So I imagine some of these might get a little worn down, but there are space pretty close together to where I think it's going to be more about your ability to get off one log and then get to the next one, which I have zero ability doing that. I've never practiced, but I have an idea where I think if I can just get my skid plate up onto each and then slide over, that is pretty non hectic. And I think I can make that work. So we're going to go watch a couple more people hit these and then we're going to attempt it myself. Listen, let's do some more music. Alright, so that was pretty piss poor. <laughs> that might ruin my race. <laughs> One thing I was gonna say is if you if you fail at the log crossing, at the very least you wanna fail on the other side of the log. I was able to do that in most, so we'll see what happens. But let's go uh, finish our practice session and get back to the pits and uh, start getting ready for my race. All right, folks, so we were going to uh, speak with Kyle and Chris, but they got out in their race um, you know, before I could get to them. But Paul's been wanting to get in on this challenge as well, and apparently he also has a bet and a challenge for me. So, Paul, what, what, what do you got here? All right, so here's the deal. Okay, you know, it's pretty rough out there today. You know, I'm pretty muddy. So my bet to you is I'll give you $100 and get within the top 10. What's top top 10? Yeah, top 10. Open B. Open B? All right, yeah, top 10. Okay. All right, if not, next I owe you 100. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Come on now. Might go double nothing on that one. But if you don't get within the top 10 next practice session, you have to ride without a seat on. So take the seat off my take bike. Take the seat off, whole practice session, at least an hour and a half. Stand up. On. Stand up the whole time. Okay. Okay. What do you think? No, I, I think that's actually a great idea because if you think about it, this, this course is so stand-up oriented, I'm pretty sure I'll find some flaws in my game, you know, in terms of hitting all these moves and stuff. So yeah, that's good. All right, if I don't get top 10, I owe him 100 bucks. And the next session, I gotta ride without a seat. No seat. I almost kinda hope I lose, not so I have to pay 100 bucks, but so I can try this no seat deal. All right, Paul, good, good luck, luck out there. there you too. <laughs>
ride. What a start. We settle in, 
two bar. Raise fuck. Oh no! I had my own race. Don't worry about getting past. Okay, status update. We have settled into the race. I absolutely ran into a brick wall, stamina wise, and had absolutely no ability to sustain the starting pace that I was on. And now, Now I'm getting mowed. 250 bees are flying by. Already it's bad, folks. Goggles are good, though. Not fogging up too bad. All right, trying to get into a stand-up rhythm here. Coming around to the logs. I'm not 100% sure if it'll be worth hitting those damn things. Really debating on whether or not I'm gonna bitch out after talking a bunch of trash before the race. I gotta look at him when I get there. Hang a ride, they say. Go around this way, they say. Oh my god, don't go in that hole, though. lower gear next time.
you got back up. Okay, firmly in lap two, absolutely already torched. Trying to salvage some little bit of technique here. Let's cross right every rut, folks. Woo!
lap three. I'm dying, folks. I'm dead. I have expired. I'm just gonna try to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Hey, hey, hey there we go. I was late to that party. Oh. Diagonal rear. Ah. Harper. Let's get him. Let's get Harper. Come on, Steve-O. Oh, no! Hey, buddy. <laughs>
right there. That's why. That's why you keep going.